Hey guys, thanks for joining me uh, for the fascia lecture. Um, we're going to specifically focus on the what's called the thoracolumbar fascia, or the TLF. Uh, so let's get started. So first, let's talk a little bit about fascia. What is fascia? So fascia is considered your soft skeleton. Um, looks kind of like a spider web, if you want to picture what it looks like. This picture um, is a good representation of what it kind of looks like throughout your whole body. Um, fascia is considered a colloid, which means that it's a fiber uh, type substance as well as a fluid. Uh, because of this combination, um, the, this is what kind of helps that fascia and you be able to, to move uh, in a fluid-like uh, way or motion. Um, it's considered connective tissue. There's all kinds of different types of tissue in our body and this is fascia is considered a connective uh, tissue that's continuous throughout the entire body. It surrounds literally every bone, every muscle, every nerve. Um, everything in your body, as I'm sure you've heard before, is, is connected. And this is why, um, down to the smallest level, literally everything in your body is connected, which is pretty fascinating. Um, there is three different types of fascia, superficial, deep, and meningeal. Uh, superficial would be the type of fascia that separates your skin from your muscles. Uh, the deep fascia is what surrounds your actual muscles. And meningeal is the type of fascia that surrounds your nervous system, okay, specifically the, the nerves. <laughs> um, and again, this is it's pretty crazy that literally this, this fascia, this network, this fibrous a fascial web that is throughout our entire body literally starts um, at this level of our skin and goes down as far as to the nucleus of all of the cells in our body. Pretty, pretty crazy actually. Uh, so why is this important for runners uh, and really important for anybody? Um, but first of all, any sort of injury can be tied back to either some sort of joint restriction um, some sort of muscle length issue, meaning um, a muscle that's not, it's not being lengthened enough, it's, it's really super tight, uh, a weak muscle, some sort of strength deficit, or a coordination deficit, meaning that uh, the muscles um, are not moving in a coordinated way as they should in order for you to be more, to be the most efficient with a particular movement. Uh, the last one that kind of gets forgotten is a fascial restriction. So a fascial restriction can also contribute uh, to runners um, and really anybody's um, injury so and hence the reason we're talking about fascia today um, according to research fascia is actually considered the most pain sensitive uh, tissue in in the body specifically the fascia that's located in the low back um, the thoracolumbar fascia um, is one of the the main ones that ones that is the most pain sensitive in the body so all that being said, it is important that we consider this when addressing an injury and when addressing how to prevent an injury um, because if there are fascial restrictions throughout your body, this can actually, this can lead to an increase in chance of injury um, because there is, there is stress, more stress being placed on uh, certain areas of the body and not enough on other areas of the body. So the distribution of stress is is unequal, it's not balanced. So we need to fix that wherever that restriction is in order for your body to be able to move more fluidly and more efficiently. So this uh, picture here on the right is just uh, a photo that kind of uh, demonstrates the mo more common uh, running injuries that are prevalent in runners. Um, low back pain is one of them. Um, surprisingly, I know you may think, what, low back pain? But um, it is and in a second, you'll you'll see why as we talk more about the thoracolumbar fascia, uh, hamstring strains, as you most of you have heard of, IT band syndrome, Achilles tendonitis, calf strains, uh, patellofemoral pain syndrome, which is in your knee, shin splints is a big one, and plantar fasciitis. So, okay, so now why is the TLF or the thoracolumbar fascia important for runners to know about? And this is what it looks like here. Well, this is a good representation, but it's this triangular. Um, part here that is circled in blue. Uh, it is a highly, a strong piece of fascia that's triangular shape. It stabilizes your spine and it's actually made of three different layers that are each about five and a half meters thick. Okay, it bears extremely high loads 
um, it creates 30% more efficiency for muscles to work. So because it's able to carry that load, it allows your muscles to work more efficiently. Um, 30% <laughs> is, is how much it, it increases that efficiency. So um, now what's interesting about this, this guy is that it transmits its force diagonally. So meaning, um, now all around in that triangle, it's gonna, it's gonna hold those high loads. As it's holding those high loads and stabilizing your spine, let's say maybe when you're lifting a heavy box from the ground, um, the right side of your thoracolumbar fascia is gonna transmit its, its load or its force diagonally, so to the opposite side, to the left side, okay, and vice versa. So, um, I'm gonna use this example I'm gonna tell you about because uh, glute activation is uh, is important for runners and it's also one of the most um, it's it's hard for runners to activate their glutes it's, it's it is hard for a lot of people to activate their glutes just because we are a society that sits a lot um, those muscles don't get used as much as they much as they should they're dormant as we sit all day at work or whatever um, but for runners we see this a lot that it is hard to activate those glutes and we tend to overuse our hamstring muscles so that being said I'm using this example um, because of where the thoracolumbar fascia is located and it's actually located um, between your glute muscles and your latissimus dorsi muscle okay which is this upper portion here of your upper uh, kind of mid to upper all the way down to your low back really um, but let's just say that your lats as well as your TFL um, has some sort of fascial restriction it's tight um, that because of that that's actually going to affect the opposite uh, glute muscle okay so if it's tight on the right then it may be harder for you to actually activate your glute on the left so pretty crazy actually um, again it shows you that everything is connected okay so what I want you to try at home, I did put this up on my Instagram uh, page last week to try, but if you haven't yet, try performing um, either a donkey kick or a clam exercise, which I have pictured here. Um, the donkey kick focuses more on activating that glute max, and that clam shell focuses on activating your glute med. It also does activate your glute max, but uh, more focused on the glute med. Um, try performing one of those exercises, okay? Pay attention to each side, right and left, and see how it feels, how, how trying to activate your glute muscle, glute max or glute med, um, see how that feels. Is there one side that's more difficult than the other? Then I want you to decide, okay, it was maybe it's hard to activate my right glute. Then I want you to try foam rolling, okay, your left kind of upper to mid back where that uh, TLF and lat um, would be, okay? I want you to foam roll for about a minute, 60 seconds, okay? And then I want you to perform either the donkey kick or the clam, whichever one you did first, okay, on that difficult side and see if you notice a difference, okay, in firing that glute, okay? So if you do, then you may have had some sort of restriction in that area that was preventing your glute from firing, okay? So pretty, pretty cool. Um, and the reason we're foam rolling is because foam rolling is specific for, is supposed to be used for uh, fascial restrictions for breaking up those adhesions in in, in that uh, in those areas so okay so let's kind of tie this all together I know that was kind of a lot of information in a quick amount of time um, but in summary uh, fascia is literally everywhere throughout your entire body which is pretty cool so that but that means that if there are restrictions within that within this huge network it may be a contributing factor to an injury that you may be suffering from right now Okay, or could in the future if you don't uh, maintain your body like we talked about last week, just like a car. If you're not uh, doing regular maintenance on it, okay, like foam rolling, breaking up those adhesions, um, those fascial restrictions, then this could be something you, you know, have down the line. Um, glute activation is extremely important for running if efficiency, okay, um, but according to research, it's actually been uh, shown to be minimal glute activation in, in runners. So like I said, that's why I use that example, and that's why I want you runners out there to try this. Try foam rolling that, that lat and that TLF and see if your opposite glute works, works a little better. Um, that TLF, basically because of it being able to transmit that load diagonally actually acts as a, a tendon or kind of an extension of that of that opposite glute. 
So it's just, that gives you a little better picture of why, um, it, because it's so connected, how having a tight TLF can really affect that glute muscle. Okay, um, so foam rolling, let's foam roll and see if that increases your glute activation. Okay, and you should do this, again, if you, specifically if you have an injury right now, lower, lower limb injury, a hip, a knee, an ankle, foot, anything like that, but if you're healthy, again, give it a try, let's prevent, um, prevent your glutes from not firing, <laughs> um, and allow, allow them to fire in the right way so we can prevent uh, further injuries uh, below um, in those lower limbs later, okay? So thank you very much. Uh, see you next time. Um, if we talk about fascia, we'll have some more fascinating facts. Ha ha ha, pun intended. Thank you, Mrs. Rotarius, for that lovely pun. Um, and we look forward to seeing you, seeing you soon. All right, bye-bye.